Hello and welcome to this AP Comparative Government and Politics lecture. Today, I'm just going to be talking about the Chinese Communist Party or the CCP. Because China is such a big topic, I'm going to divide it into a couple of smaller lectures rather than one big one. The first thing that we have to understand about the CCP and its control over China is that really the era of Xi Jinping that we're in right now is somewhat of an anomaly. After the death of Mao Zedong in 1976, Chinese party secretaries went through a period within which there was decreasing power held by the party secretary. This led to an era that historians and political scientists have called intraparty democracy. What we mean by that is really between 1976 and 2012, it looked like even though China wasn't going to become a democracy itself in that all of its citizens would get to vote, within the party itself, there was going to be this idea of discussion and compromise. That went out the window in 2012 when Xi Jinping rose to power. And I'm going to do a, a specific lecture just on him today. But understand that historically, the era that we're in right now and have been for about the last decade is very much an anomaly when we look at the rest of the history of the CCP. Now, what we need to understand about um, Xi Jinping is that unlike his predecessors, he has not designated a successor at this time. And because he has eliminated, and I'll talk about this at the end, the term limits for the office of president, there's no indication that he's going to leave power anytime soon. He's also done a very effective job of eliminating any of his rivals mostly by having them arrested or by having them demoted to the really pointless position of vice president. But in terms of the CCP itself, what you need to take away from this is that the office of party secretary and president are different. You could have two people in the different roles. Party secretary is the head of the party. The president is the head of the government. Xi Jinping happens to occupy both. That again, in and of itself, is a little bit of a historical anomaly, but it gives him tremendous power. But the thing that you have to understand about China is that the party secretary is more important than the president. We think of it as the opposite. Let's just take the current United States president, Joe Biden. Joe Biden's power comes from the fact that he is the elected president of the United States. His power does not come from the fact that he is the arguable head of the Democratic Party. That concept gets flipped on its head when we talk about China. Now, the first thing that you have to understand is that the sort of base level of power in the CCP is the National Party Congress. The National Party Congress is held every five years in Beijing. It's held in the fall. It's mirrored by something similar that goes on in the government, which is the National People's Congress, which we'll talk about later on. The National Party Congress is about 2,300 people, which again, if you consider the massive population of China, that's not a lot. The Chinese Communist Party or CCP today is about 7% of the population. It's, it's about 100 million people, maybe a little bit less. And that sounds like a lot. But again, if you think about China's overall population, it's a fraction of the number of people who live in the nation state. Now, the National Party Congress actually follows a very pro forma, very formalized schedule. And what I want to make clear here is that the National Party Congress doesn't do anything per se. The National Party Congress meets typically in October. In August, about two months beforehand, the actual leaders of the party come up with what the agenda is going to be. 
And so the National Party Congress operates as sort of a rubber stamp or a way of gaining legitimacy for the party so that it can be publicized that everyone was on board with all these decisions. On day one, the chairperson gives the party report. This is not a sort of specific policy agenda. You should think of this more as like a series of aspirational statements. Usually there's a lot of references to the past and large concepts of the CCP. Between days two and five, there's different votes to amend the party con constitution in ways that those individuals who met in August have already decided it would be amended. Day six is really the only important day. That is when individuals are elected to the central committee, which I'll discuss in just a second. And on day seven, the central committee holds its first meeting, which is called a plenum. So the first plenum is on day seven. So it's, it's about a week long affair, the National Party Congress. And again, it only meets every five years. So if we look at the structure of the Communist Party, there's the National Party Congress, 2,300 people called delegates. From there, we go to the Central Committee, which is an elected representative of 200 members. Now, when I say elected, the individuals who have met in August usually forward about an extra 5%. So maybe 210 names are sent to the National Party Congress, and they vote down to 200. So essentially, the people who are going to be on the Central Committee have already been picked. From the Central Committee, 25 people are selected to serve on the Politburo, which is the second most important policy-making branch of the Chinese government. From there, there's the Standing Committee. And the Standing Committee is really where all decisions are made. The Standing Committee is only seven to nine people, one of which is the party secretary, Xi Jinping, in this particular case. Now, what we have to remember is that China is a party state. And what I mean by that is that there is a Chinese government, and then there is a single ruling party that is in charge of the Chinese government. Now, there are multiple parties if we look at China. There's a Communist Party, there's a Pe Peasant Workers Party. There's a lot of parties here that I haven't even put on this slide. But they form what is called a united front, which means it's not like it is in the United States or Great Britain or really any of the other six nations in our AP Comparative Government course. All of these parties pursue the exact same agenda. They just go about it in slightly different ways. So there's not really a legitimate political discourse like there is in, let's say, Great Britain, for example. Now, backing up, if we kind of look for a second at the Communist Party versus the Chinese government, the Chinese state, the Communist Party encompasses everyone who goes to the National Party Congress, but it does not encompass everyone who works in the Chinese state. That's why that bubble is slightly on the outside. Many people who work in the Chinese state are members of the CCP, but not everyone is. There's hundreds of thousands of Chinese state workers. They're not all members of the CCP, but it is important to remember that the CCP ultimately controls who gets appointed to any of the important positions in the government. And so that is to say that the party is on top of the state. The state is less important than the party is in this system. A case in point for this is actually kind of a really bizarre uh, example. And that is that if you go to China, license plates are issued in terms of numbers. So whoever has license plate number one in the district is the most important person in the district. Whoever has license plate number two is the second most important. And in this case, License plate number one in the district goes to the local party official. License plate number two in the, in the district goes to the mayor who works for the state. So that's a really clear indication of who's more important in the sort of pecking order that we're dishing out here. Now, as I mentioned before, in 2018, the term limits for the president were removed. But critically, there never have been term limits for party secretary. And that's really important because that's where the basis of power in the Chinese government lies. And because there's no term limits for party secretary, that has allowed individuals to still be 
really pulling the strings on the government without technically being the head of government in this case. Now, does any of that matter in this case? Not really. Why? Because presently, the head of government and the head of the party are the same person. Xi Jinping sits on top of the Chinese power mountain right now. And that is what you need to remember as you go into this test when we think about how does the CCP function. Right now, it functions based off what does Xi Jinping want to do.